Hi there, everybody. This is Teacher Mary with Dada ABC, and today I'd just like to show you about how to use the features of ManyCam and to make sure that your computer is up for the task. Okay, so about your system. I've found that ManyCam is really kind of heavy duty on your video graphics processing. So most PCs these days, most laptops have kind of a mid-range graphics card. And I used to use ManyCam on my HP laptop and that had an Intel 520 graphics card. That was okay. Um, but I did notice that from time to time uh, that ManyCam would be lagging, especially if I had too many things going on at the same time. So if you're not sure about um, the quality of your graphics card, or it's just kind of mid-range, then I would definitely try not to have too many things going on in this right-hand area. And I wouldn't use too many of these special effects. I would only apply one of them at a time. I think one time I had like three different things on the screen, and then ManyCam just crashed. Now, I did, um, after several months, I upgraded my PC. Now I've got um, kind of like a gaming PC that has um, an NVIDIA GeForce graphics card. The PC itself has 16 gigabytes of RAM and an i7 processor. So since I did that, I've had absolutely no problems and everything runs smooth sailing with ManyCam. Um, I think especially since it's got that, that gaming graphics card. So if you've got um, kind of an older laptop with only like four gigabytes of RAM and one of the older Intel processors and, and a rinky dinky video graphics card, a video cam, uh, I'm sorry, mini cam might not even work for you. Um, I have a MacBook Pro and even though it has eight gigabytes of RAM and was a $1,500 computer, it doesn't have the best graphics processing and I can barely use ManyCam on that computer. It just lags terribly. So make sure you check your settings and um, I would recommend having at least eight gigabytes of RAM on your computer and like... The next thing I'd like to talk about is setting up your audio. Audio can be one of the trickiest, most difficult things about using ManyCam. Making sure that you can be heard is probably the most important and it takes the most amount of care. Um, so the first thing I'll do is go down here to my computer's um, little icon of a microphone. Right click on it and choose recording devices. So I've got a lot of things in here, um, but what you would need to do is make sure that whatever you're using, like my headset here, that you choose that as your default device for recording. So I have that chosen as my default and the regular microphone that just comes with my computer is the real tech high definition audio. It's there and it's available. Um, I wouldn't disable it, but I wouldn't choose it as the default. And this is going to make your life a lot easier when you go into the Dada ABC classroom and have to choose your input. Um, it'll recognize that many cams there as your audio. Um, so everything else is either disabled or it's just not set as the, the default. So that's for recording. Then the next thing um, I always do when I start up ManyCam before I go into the classroom is click down here. You can see the audio tab. In the audio tab I have this headset chosen as my input and you do that by clicking add microphone and I've already chosen it. Now over here there's a little slider so I can make it louder which I can't hear but now you will you'll sound louder to your student. Um, I usually keep mine just in the middle and that seems to be okay. If you want to get rid of this, you can just click at the X and you won't have any audio input anymore. Um, if you want to mute yourself for whatever reason for a moment, maybe you have to sneeze or something, then just clicking this little picture of the microphone will do that. And now you can hear me. 
Okay, um, so that's the audio selection um, from the, the list down here of all these tabs at the bottom. The next thing that you should check with your audio and the last is in Minicam's settings. So up here in the corner where you see the three little lines, click that, go to settings, and click audio. And make sure that your default audio playback device has been selected. If there's nothing selected there or you have the wrong thing selected, then you this is for you, for what you're going to hear. If you don't have that chosen correctly, you might not hear your student or you might not hear um, the audio from a video that you share with them. So just make sure you've got that selected and you should have no problems. So the checklist that I kind of go through before I start up um, with ManyCam, before I teach, is I make sure that in my PC's audio settings that that's okay that I have my mic as the default input. That's the first thing I check. The second thing is the ManyCam audio, oops, ManyCam audio tab. And that's the one at the bottom of the screen. And I make sure I've chosen my microphone input there and that it's not muted. The third thing I check is ManyCam audio settings where you saw those those three lines and I make sure that the default playback device is also chosen as my microphone. Um, one more thing that I'll say about the audio is try not to have more than one thing at the same time down here in this tab. Uh, one time I added my system sound because I wanted the student to hear the sound coming from my computer. It made my voice sound like an echo then, and the audio of the video sounded like an echo. So don't have those chosen at the same time. Um, if you're playing a video for them, you don't need to worry about choosing system sound or worrying whether or not they'll hear that audio, because Minicam knows when you're playing a video, it's playing the whole file. And in a video file, video and audio are already embedded, so you don't need to worry about choosing anything else for audio settings for playing that. The last thing I'll talk about with the audio is that you can load up a playlist. As you see over here in the bottom right hand corner, there is an audio playlist area. So you can click these three lines there and add something. So add a file. So I've downloaded some of the audio from 1A Longman Express. So let's say we want to hear um, Gary's Adventure. So double click it there, it pulls it in, and then double click it here. And now the student. Read can hear it too. and discover comics. Gary's Adventures. You can pause it right down there. You can mute it. Um, you can go back and forward or put it on a loop or shuffle it, whatever you like. So that's the audio playlist. Okay, so as you can see, I am here with the ManyCam application open. And this little window here that you see, this big square, I'm just going to call that the, the preview screen. So to set up your video, you need to just click in this screen anywhere and do a right click and go to the first option that says cameras. Now for me, I'm going to choose my Logitech HD Pro webcam. Or for you, you can use your computer's internal camera. My internal camera is the, the Bison cam, but I don't really like to use that one because it doesn't look as good. I've got an external USB camera. So you select that, and then you've got your video input. Now if I want to turn my video input off, I can go to this playlist area and you can see down here in the left hand corner that my input is here in this square. If I click this little X right there, it'll get rid of it. Now you can see there is no input. So again, just right click, go to your cameras, choose your camera, and there you are. 
Okay, so after you've chosen your video input, just to show yourself, um, you can play around with how to change your video input and transition between inputs. So right now, I've just got it um, using my web camera so the student can see me. And if I want to go somewhere else, you can see over here on the right side of the screen, there are all these grayed out um, rectangles. So um, one of my most commonly used other video inputs is just a, a blue screen. So right here, now we just have a chunk of blue and that's what the student will see. And the way that you can choose this is by right clicking inside one of these boxes and go to blank image. And then you can choose any color you like. You can make it purple or teal or white even. For me, I usually like to keep it um, with aqua so that there's some kind of contrast in the background. And then if I want to go back to me so the student can see me again, I just hover over the video input source that has me and click transition. So now it transitions back to me. Now, if you want, you can choose different transitions. Um, the difference between trans for transition and cut is this is just going to be like a quick cut. It goes right over to that other input and then cuts back to you. But if you want it to be a little bit um, more thematic or cinematic, you can use the transition. So again, you would just right click in that square, choose transition, and you've got all these transitions to choose from, like pop up center, and then it gives you a little preview of what that looks like. And just to let you know, the speed, I would keep it at about one and a half seconds. I found that when my speed was at half a second, the transition was so fast it was not even noticeable. Um, and one second was still kind of, I barely caught it. So I'd keep it at about one and a half seconds, maybe even two seconds. So let's see what that looks like now. Now nah, that's definitely noticeable. <laughs> and a little bit more fun. Okay, the next thing I'd like to show you guys is the fun part. Okay, so in this 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 screen here where, where your face is, when you click there with a right click, you're going to see cameras, game, IP cameras, many cam mobile, media files, and so on. And we've already gone over the camera settings. The next thing I want to show you, we'll just go in order, is the media files. When you click that, it's suddenly going to pop up with all these choices from your own computer. So if I go to pictures from my computer, you can see I've got a lot of files here with students that I regularly teach and pictures I've used to teach them individually. So let's go to Amy's file and I was teaching her about different kinds of food and um, I was showing her the difference between Pepsi and Coke. So if I choose that picture, now that's what she sees and that photo will fill up your video input source. If you want to go back to yourself, you can just right click again, cameras, choose your camera, and there you are. <laughs> Now, for the same area for media files, you can also play a video. So I've got a lot of videos in here. Let's say I want to show them mm, my favorite phonics video or, okay, here's, here's Jackie Chan. <laughs> that's a very, very short clip, but that's a video. Let's see if we can find a little longer one. Here's some cute baby goats. Oh, what happened? Actually, I'm really happy that happened. This is a teaching moment. Not all videos work in Minicam. Here's why. It's all about pixel dimensions. Minicam is slightly finicky when it comes to the pixel dimensions of your video. So how do you know what they are or what it wants? Okay, so here in the, the bottom, like this scrolling, what do you call this, tab of, of choices across 
the bottom, image, audio, playlist, text, go to image, and you can see where it says resolution. That has to do with the pixel dimensions. Click the down arrow on it, and you can go to customize. Now it's showing you all the different combinations of pixel dimensions or resolution that ManyCam will accept. So it'll take all these. We've got one, two, three, four, five, 15 different sizes. I'd say that 640 by 480 is pretty standard. Um, 1024 by 768 is not very standard, but it'll take it. 1280 by 720 is very standard, and so is 1920 by 1080. So the problem is sometimes we end up downloading a video and we find out that the dimensions of it were not one of those 15. If it's not, you're not going to be able to use that video unless you're quite tech savvy and have some of your own video editing software. Um, and can change its dimensions, which I've been known to do from time to time. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of this, this training video. So let's go into my PC and see what happened with that video about the goats. Okay, cute baby goats. I'm going to right click it and click properties. Here are the properties of that video. I'm going to click details. And here it's showing me the frame width and height. This is the resolution. So that is an 854 by 480 video. So unfortunately, 854 by 480 is not something very standard. Minicam does not support that. And so that's why you saw that happen when I tried to play that video and it just looked crazy. So for the most part, videos will work okay. Um, if you've taken a video with your phone, it's probably going to be one of those standard pixel dimensions that we can see here. But 854 is very strange, and um, that one's not there. So that. So the other things that you can see down here in the image tab are zoom. Zoom is one of my favorites. You can see it's right here. I usually like to just drag the slider and go whoo, whoo. This can be very useful for teaching pronunciation. Let's say you really want to zoom in on your mouth to show them about the difference between P and B or something. So you can zoom in. Now it's showing my eyes. So you can actually use your mouse and grab that and move it. I'm just clicking and dragging to go to the area I want and now I can go okay p, p, and then just zoom back out and that's fun. The other thing you can see is there um, this square here is usually the default. It's just showing you the full screen but you could also click here, here and do a picture and picture. So now I've got this extra little square and I could do whatever I want with it. I can position it somewhere else and it acts just like another video input source now. It'll be the same process. You just right click and choose what you want, whether it's a photo or a video or a blank image or even pulling in a, a YouTube URL. So to do that, here's uh, we'll go to YouTube. And let's say I want to show them, I don't know, let's say the letter M song. That's one of my favorites from ABC Mouse. So I've just clicked up here in the address bar, control C for copy, then go back to ManyCam, control V. I've pasted in that URL, wait a moment for it to load up and then hit OK. You have to press ah, your lips together when you is. say the letter M. I can pause that right there from there. And if I want to get rid of it, I can just click back here to the uh, to the reg regular choice of having just the regular screen. Do two picture in pictures. That's pretty heavy duty on your PC's graphics card. I haven't usually used that one. You can split your screen. So me on one side 
and maybe the video on the other side. You can split it this way. You can even split it four ways. <laughs> I usually keep it right here though. Um, flip and rotate. You can do this, go round and round in circles, or do a mirror inversion. Wow. From side to side or top to bottom. Um, the grayscale, if you push that, you will become black and white. I don't usually use that one because kids like to see everything in full color, but it's there. You can also adjust your brightness. Let's say you're in a room that's looking pretty dark and the lighting's not good. You can pull up the brightness a bit and you can also adjust the contrast. So there's that and then there it is this way. I usually keep mine about in the middle and that seems to be okay. The colors over on this side is the saturation. Um, I have never really messed with that. I think the colors are usually okay, but if I want to appear more red, I can, or with more blues or more greens, uh, but it's usually okay red right about. The next tab I'm going to talk about is the playlist tab. Now. Somehow, even though I haven't really created a playlist, all I'm doing is streaming the video input from my web camera, Minicam does still put that into the beginning of what might be a playlist. So you can see that it is here under the playlist tab down in the bottom left. If I want, I can add something else, clicking that square that's gray and say add. So maybe I want to prepare for class ahead of time and have my um, brushing your teeth song ready to go. So what you can do is start off teaching and saying hello, and then you might want to go ahead and transition to that video. So you would click it there, and then there it is. And then you can go back to yourself. Um, to be honest, I don't usually use this playlist tab because I find the same functionality up here in these squares. That's where I usually hold everything. Um, and it just gives me one extra thing to think about usually, the playlist. Um, also, if you want to adjust the volume of yourself, you'll find that in playlist also. Here's the volume slider in the bottom right. So now I will appear or I will sound very loud to the student or very quiet. Okay, and you can mute that. And those same functions are also under the audio tab um, next to your microphone. But let's say you might be playing a video. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull in a video from Media Files. And if I wanna make that video's audio quieter, this will do that too. And what I've done there is I've paused it. You can pause it by hitting pause right in this area. And I think pause is also in the middle of the screen, right here. So there's pause and play in the middle for ease of access. But if you wanna do something like make a playlist, you can go to the previous item in the playlist from here or the next item, or put a video on a loop or shuffle it. And then you can just click in the middle, go back to your web camera. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is entering text. So again, I'll show you how I get a text window. So if you're doing it for the first time, you could just hit plus on one of these little boxes over here on the left. So I'll hit plus and I'll choose a blank image and I'll choose Aqua. So now I've got an Aqua screen over here. I'll transition to it. But what I have right now is just an Aqua screen with nothing on it. And if I start typing text, we can't see anything yet because I haven't defined a text area. So well, the first thing you want to do is click this text tab at the bottom of the screen and then sli slide over this radio button to enable text. Then you're going to click in this box that says input text here. 
click there and start typing. Now the text shows up and the student can see your text. But for me, this is a little bit small. The text box is just at the bottom. But you'll see that you can actually grab it with your mouse and move it around to center it. Or you can make it bigger. So now what I usually do is I drag it all the way down that way and I drag it all the way to the top so in fact my defined text area is the whole screen. So let's try to start typing something again. It'll begin in the middle and then you can hit enter to go to a new line. And you can enter as many lines as will fit. If I want to change the size of my text, you would just highlight it first. I just highlighted it down here. And then click the box that has the letter A in it for font. As soon as I click that, I can choose whatever font I like. There are many fonts in here. You can make it normal or italic. And what I most often use is the size. So if I want to make this text bigger, I can choose maybe size 28 hit OK, and now it's really big. We can also change the color. So you would just click that letter A box again, and the color is right here. So maybe I want my text to be green. And now it's green. The other thing you can do is change the opacity. So if you want it to be a little lighter and disappear or have it really bold. I usually use, or I usually keep my opacity all the way up so it's nice and clear and sharp. Um, there's also two effects, the strikeout, if you want to show um, maybe an incorrect sentence, and then there's an underlining effect. I usually keep my text as black on a blue background or the aqua background. There's one other choice that's over here, and it's scrolling. I usually have mine set to no scrolling, but if you want your text to be scrolling, you can choose that. You can even adjust the speed. There it goes really slow, or really, really super fast. There's left to right, right to left, top to bottom, and you guessed it, bottom to top. So you might even be able to use that if you really want to play a game with them or show them a word really quick. And to get rid of my text, I usually just highlight all of it and then hit the backspace key and it disappears. So just make sure that enable text, this little radio button here, the green one, is on. And then you can start typing whatever it is that you like. And then, of course, you can transition back to your... The last thing I want to talk about is the drawing tab. So if you just click on draw down here at the bottom, you can see that there are all these colors that you can choose from to draw on the screen. Um, you want to make sure that the picture of the pencil is green, that that's enabled. That means you can draw. The second one is a little eraser. That's for erasing on the spot. And then the picture of the paint drop, I guess it is, will just fill your whole screen with whatever color you have chosen. So right now, let's say I choose this um, kind of pink color and then click in this area where my face is. Now it's all pink and I'm gone. If I want to get rid of that, I can either hit this clear button in the bottom right hand corner or even the undo button and that'll do the job as well. Um, for the most part, I use the drawing tab when I'm over here on my blue screen. So let's say I'm showing them about handwriting and we're um, writing the letter F. I've just got the pencil chosen and I can write. And then hit clear and start drawing something else. Now I've got a touch screen monitor, so I'm actually doing this with my finger. But for most people, I'm assuming you'll use your mouse to draw. 
The other thing you can do when you're drawing is adjust this slider right here for thicker or thinner. It's usually set to being kind of thinner, but if you want, you can pull it up here and then get a really, really thick line. Wow, that's very thick. And pull it down a little more and see how it looks, a little bit thinner. I usually keep mine right about here. That seems to do the job. And there are all these colors across the bottom. And if you click this little down arrow here, a color selector will come up. If you really want to pick um, an exact color and you know about HTML codes, you could even enter that code right there. But I think the colors that are already down here at the bottom are usually more than enough for me to have fun with. So that's strong. Now, um, the last thing for some of these other tabs that are down here, such as time, lower third, and chroma key, I'm not really going to go into those because a lot of these don't get unlocked unless you've upgraded to a more expensive version of ManyCam. Um, the chroma keys I've never used. The lower third um, takes really, really hard processing on the graphics card, so I don't really use that one. And the time, well, we've got a timer in class. We have a clock uh, that's right there on the screen, so I haven't found this one to be very necessary. But if you did want to use it, you could click the on button here, and then it shows a little clock, and you can set it for however long or short as you want. So let's say we want 20 seconds. Um, and then you can hit the play button and it'll start counting down. So maybe you can play a game with your student and tell them, okay, I'll give you 20 seconds to complete such and such task. Go ahead. Um, and you can move this thing around the screen like that. Um, and whenever I've used it, I've usually just kept it down here at the bottom. And you can change its opacity and its size right there. So if you want to use the time, you can. There's a countdown timer. Um, the one in the middle here, that one just counts upward. Hit play and it just starts counting. And make sure you have on enabled. And the one over here is just a clock. And that one's just going to show you what time it is. So that's about time. Okay, last but not least, and probably the favorite, is using some of these special effects. So up at the top screen here, you can see it says effects. You click the effects tab, and it'll show you over here all the categories of effects that you can use. And what I use most often are the objects and the face accessories. So definitely take your time to explore these, click on them, see how they work. Um, so here's the little dog. You just have to click on it and it shows up. You can even move it around or put it back. And if you want to get rid of that little dog, you don't want it to be there anymore, then you can just click the little X next to his, his name over on the side where it says selected. Uh, for most users with a regular computer, I definitely don't recommend having more than one effect going at one time. So let's say I have Pikachu on right now, and then I decide I want to put the sun on there. Now I've got two effects going at the same time, and they're both animated. Um, it might be okay to have one or two, but if you find, you just have to play with it. If you find that your computer is starting to make a lot of processing noises, or it's slowing down, or getting laggy, um, it could be you have too many effects going at one time. So to get rid of them, you just look over here to the left where it says which effects are selected and just kind of hover there and an X will come up and you can take away the effect from your screen. So I click X on Pikachu, Pikachu's gone, click X on the hot sun, and then it's gone. If you click X in here, for example, here's the sun. If I click the X next to that one, it'll delete that from my album of effects. So you would click delete if you want to get rid of it altogether. But I'm not going to do that right now. Um, if you want to look back at the categories of effects, you just click this little back button here. 
Right now I'm looking at objects. Now I can look at face accessories when I click on that. So you just click it once and suddenly I have an owl face. Then turn off the owl and maybe put some bugs on my face. That one's really gross. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorites is the cat mask. Meow, 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 meow. And there are so, so many. As a default, Minicam only comes with a certain number of these special effects, but you can download more from their website. So to download these effects from their website, just go to Minicam. I usually type Minicam effects into my browser tab and then click on the first result and Windows. You can choose OS X if you're using a Mac, but there aren't nearly as many. And so let's say I'm thinking of a certain effect that I want to use, like I'm teaching a class and I know we're gonna talk about giraffes. So I can type in giraffe and see if they have something. Oh, look at that, they do. So then let's say I wanna choose this bashful little giraffe. Click download it'll prompt me where I want to download this effect. I have a folder I created on my computer in PC downloads called Minicam effects. And you can see this is where I have all my effects files. Um, this is called a .mce file. So just hit save. Now I have this effect downloaded. So go back to Minicam and to add it into one of my albums, you just need to click this plus button and it'll open up um, a dialog for you to find where you downloaded things. Mine automatically goes here because I've, I've been in this file so many times already. And then I find here's the bashful little giraffe. So click it, click open, and then I can see because of this orange one that they put the giraffe into the objects category area. So just click on that one and scroll to the bottom Usually the new effects get added to the bottom. Okay, and there's my bashful little giraffe. Click on him, and there he is. Oh, he's so cute. And if I want him to go away, again, just click this X. Um, some of the other effects, I highly encourage you to just play around with them, see which ones you like and which you want to use. One of the biggest things about using Minicam is knowing that it's kind of like a backstage for your web camera and um, getting used to it and using it smoothly and seamlessly is kind of like learning to DJ. You just have to practice, you know, because there's like more than one thing going on at the same time. Definitely all these different things to think about. Um, so just play around with it, get used to it, and with time it definitely gets easier. So you can look around in the filters. Here's um, a, a cartoonizer filter. I look like a cartoon now. There's um, kind of this pencil drawing one called gray lines, green gradient. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. There are distortions. Um, I really like the fire distortion. It follows you. So if you don't move, it's calm. And then as soon as you start moving, it shows up. A lot of the boys really like the fire distortion. Um, there's even snow. Look at that. It's snowing. This one's amazing. It actually starts collecting in my hair and on my glasses. Um, there's a mirror effect. This one's a lot of fun, but sometimes it scares the kids. Um, so those are the distortions. Um, there are some borders. For example, I can go inside of a mouth. And um, there are backgrounds. The backgrounds are difficult to use because these rely on you having a solid color behind you. And what works the best is like a green color because that's most unlike human skin tone. Um, if you do want to try one of these, it goes like this. All right, so let's say I want to do the Stone Age background. You click on it, and then you have to get out of the way. You have to move for five seconds so that Minicam can remember what's naturally in your background, and then it's gonna superimpose this new background and ignore what it captured. But you don't want it to ignore you. 
because you want to be in front of this new background. So here's what you do. You click on it and then it'll count down from five. And during those five seconds, I should be out of the way and then come back. Sometimes it doesn't work very well, but we'll give it a try. Okay, so I'm gonna click. And sometimes some backgrounds look better than others. This one is still showing my red screen behind me. Um, if I had a green background or perfect lighting, then this would look even better. But it, it works somewhat. Okay, so yeah, I highly encourage you to just play, a lot, play around sorry, with these effects and see which ones you like to use. And um, it always makes class a lot more fun. So I wish the best of luck to you all in using ManyCam. And if you have any questions, just reach out to the ManyCam website or to Dada ABC. And um, there's a lot of help, a lot of technical support that's out there for it. And uh, it just is a matter of getting used to it and using it on a regular basis.